Begin here at 10 with a KCTV5 exclusive. Unsealed court records reveal new details in the FBI's investigation of a potential bomb plot that targeted a local hospital. The man at the center of the plan, 36-year-old Timothy Wilson, was shot and killed by the FBI when they were trying to arrest him. KCTV5's Emily Rittman searched court records, which say that he was planning to strike only hours before the stay-at-home order took effect. According to court records, Wilson wanted to bomb a local hospital before Kansas City's stay at home order took effect at midnight on March 24th. He said he couldn't wait because he thought he would draw suspicion by being one of the only cars on the road. Before investigators say Timothy R. Wilson filled a belt and storage unit with bomb making components, he searched for like minded people to plan his attack using encrypted messaging apps. Wilson reached out to a person online who agreed to work with the FBI to start tracking Wilson's suspected plans starting last September. Retired FBI agent Michael Tabman says that can't be dismissed as just talk. We can't take any chances. So if somebody starts talking about committing these crimes that we read about in this affidavit, well, we don't do a psychological profile and say, oh, he's just talking. We treat it seriously. The FBI's confidential source introduced Wilson to an undercover FBI agent. Wilson eventually met the undercover agent at a Belton storage unit. Investigators say Wilson began buying bomb making materials online and at local hardware stores and stored them in the unit. He made a reference to Timothy McVeigh. Investigators say Wilson wanted to commit a similar terrorist attack by using a vehicle borne improvised explosive device known as a VBIED in an attempt to hurt or kill as many people as he could. He suggested elementary schools, police stations, Islamic centers, or a synagogue. But his plans changed as COVID-19 became a global pandemic and became the focus of news coverage. I think had COVID-19 not been an issue, he probably wouldn't have thought about a hospital. According to court records, the undercover agent recorded a meeting with Wilson. At that meeting, Wilson suggested he would drive a VBIED to the Belton Regional Medical Center and set a timer for it to explode 20 minutes later. He wanted the undercover agent to pick him up. Then he would walk back to his Raymore home that is about a mile away from the hospital. Wilson suggested they do a timed dry run to see how long his plan would take. After the dry run, the undercover agent loaded the bomb making materials into his vehicle and told Wilson he would take them to quote a guy who would assemble the bomb. On March 24th, investigators say Wilson went to pick up what he thought was a VBIED near the Belton storage unit, but there was no actual bomb. During the arrest, Wilson was shot and later died at the hospital. He may have reached out to someone else who shares uh, that ideology and may have actually engaged in the activity. So yes, I think it's a very strong possibility that the FBI did stop the terrorist attack. When investigators searched the home where Wilson was living in Raymore, they seized a long list of items, including a laptop, journal, multiple rounds of ammunition, guns, several tactical vests, a flak jacket, and Kevlar helmet. During the investigation, agents say Wilson sent an encrypted message to a confidential source that said, quote, if you're a Fed, then I suppose you got me now. If that's the case, make sure you bring lots of body bags when you raid my house, LOL. In encrypted messages, investigators say Wilson would use racial slurs when referring to people of different races or religions and that he held anti-government beliefs. They say he was a member of the National Socialist Movement chat groups, but decided not to attend an NSM meeting because he did not want to blow his cover. Reporting from Kansas City, Emily Rittman, KCTV5 News.